right now you are looking at the world of prime numbers, interesting and exciting. And here we see a different world, but also based on prime numbers. And what if you look at these numbers in 3D space, it is also incredibly beautiful. And this video is an author's study of ways to visualize prime numbers, you will see how some programming knowledge will allow us to see amazing pictures based on mathematics. So a prime number is a natural number that is divisible only by one in itself, and such numbers are the building blocks for all composite numbers. These days, prime numbers are an integral part of our security, they are used in computer security and cryptography, and due to them we safely make purchases with credit cards, have a secure internet connection and much more. So in order to check whether a number is prime or not, I will use a simple function in which we will obviously only check odd numbers, for odd numbers it is enough for us to check all divisors from 3 to the square root of the number itself, and at the same time we will not interested in even divisors, since all even numbers are not prime except for the number 2. This is a fairly general and simple approach to testing a number for primeness, and as you can see for the example, using this function we can now get prime numbers. And as for the visualization of prime numbers, the founder can be considered the Polish scientist Stanislaw Ulam, who in 1963, while at a boring conference, began to sketch natural numbers in a spiral in a notebook, and then began to mark prime numbers, and as a result he got a rather interesting picture, which we will render. And to go further, we must first understand how the spiral is formed, it is obvious that this is a 2D array, and if we carefully look at the formation of the spiral, we will see distinct and repeating patterns for rows and columns that are easy to formalize into an algorithm. Then, for the test, using this information, we will create a small numpy array, and now we write the code, formalizing the above patterns into an algorithm, due to which we will fill the array with numbers in a spiral, starting from 1. And as expected, we get an array filled with numbers in a spiral. And if we apply our function to the numbers of the array, then we will see the ULAM spiral, but only in text form, and there is little that can be seen useful. Therefore, for better visualization, I used the Pygame module, so here there are two classes, with the help of the first one a numpy spiral array is formed, where each prime number has a white color, and with the help of the second class we convert this array into a surface for drawing on the screen, and here we have implemented the simplest functions for scaling the resulting image, and it is possible to navigate through it. If we run the program, we will see the ULAM spiral, surprisingly, this is a very unexpected picture that appeared before us. It would seem that the unpredictability and randomness of prime numbers began to form a certain structure. And the fact that is interesting here is that these diagonal lines consist of prime numbers that are formed using polynomials, for example, prime numbers that are obtained using the Euler polynomial are marked in red. And of course, the ULAM spiral is beautiful as a masterpiece of natural art, but let's go ahead and talk about one more spiral. In 1994, Robert Sachs, a software engineer, devised an original method for representing the classical number line of positive integers. In this method, an Archimedean spiral centered on zero and making one counterclockwise rotation for each perfect square produces a remarkably organized distribution of prime and composite numbers. And by the way, it turned out to be quite simple to implement a class for the Sax spiral, the only thing that had to be done was to switch from the polar coordinate system to the Euclidean one using the sine and cosine functions to calculate the corresponding row and column in the array, and then the array would be filled with the correct values. And as a result, we get an even more interesting representation of prime numbers, an empty line going to the right immediately catches your eye, this line contains all the squares of integers. And it is believed that this spiral gives a deeper understanding of the patterns of prime numbers, because it unites the broken lines of the ULAM spiral. And it becomes especially noticeable if you use the display of polynomials again. Through this number spiral, Sachs was able to make a startling statement about what a prime number is, it is a positive integer that lies on only one product curve. So the display of these spirals left me impressed, and also strongly inspired my own study of prime numbers, and for this I decided to use the capabilities of modern OpenGL. So my idea is to work with a fragment shader to use all the power of the GPU, so for a modern OpenGL it was necessary to create a vertex buffer for a quad that will act as our screen, then create a vertex and fragment shader, and as a result, a vertex array is created for which we call the render method, and all further work will have to be done in the GLSL shader language. 
Then in the fragment shader we again use the prime number test function, and in the main function we define a variable for the output color value of the pixel. So here you can use the following approach, the screen itself is a kind of 2D array and each pixel has its own coordinates on the screen, so these coordinates can be easily converted into a number using the formula given on the slide. And so the first idea I propose is to convert the positions of the pixels to numbers and check if they are prime, if they are prime then we will display them in green, and also implement the ability to scale the image with the mouse. And if we look at the result, we again find ourselves in the world of prime numbers, it is obvious that the vertical black lines are clusters of even and multiple numbers. Yes, this is also quite an interesting picture and it reminds me of Digital Rain from the movie The Matrix. And here comes the time for experiments, I would like to show what will happen if we use the XOR operation for the X and Y coordinates instead of this formula. In addition, there is an idea to give each prime number its own unique color, for this we take a hash function that will act as a random number generator, and the seed of which will be the prime number itself. And as a result, an amazing picture opens up to us, it exceeded all my expectations, this world of prime numbers is simply amazing, the observed picture somehow reminds me of both integrated circuits and patterns on Persian carpets. But what happens if we replace the XOR operation with the logical disjunction operation? And the unthinkable and mind-blowing picture will happen again, this is another world caused by prime numbers. I'm not going to interpret this mathematically, but it looks like we've entered the fractal world of Sierpinski triangles. I am again amazed by what I saw and I want to ask a question, is our world definitely not a simulation? Of course this is a joke, but what I see now is just a screensaver that I have been dreaming of all my life. It is a pity that the screen capture program tears up the image a little, so I advise everyone to see it live. And now I propose to try to visualize prime numbers in 3D space. And for these purposes, I will use my own 3D graphics engine, also written using Pygame and modern GL modules. To display prime numbers depending on their number, I will use a regular cube model or a cube with smooth edges, and to display a large number of voxels, I will use the open GL instancing method. So, we will carry out further research in the selected cubic space, in which we will use the coordinates of each voxel to calculate the number using different formulas, and depending on whether the number is prime or not, we will render the voxel in this place. To form the necessary buffers to implement instancing in OpenGL, I use the instancing map class, and here in the getData method we iterate over all axes of the selected space where we will check for a prime number based on coordinates. And by analogy, as we did in 2D space, according to the following formula, we calculate the number based on the x, y and z coordinates. And as a result, we see how the selected space is filled with voxels corresponding to prime numbers, but everything looks somehow chaotic, although we trace some structure, it can be seen that slices of space have formed along the sides and diagonally, but despite this, this is the world of prime numbers in where we can travel. And let's just find the sum of the coordinates and see what happens. And maybe from the point of view of mathematics, this is trite, but I'm interested in getting visual forms, and now we got a layered cube resembling something on a space theme. Okay, now let's get more interesting, and now we use the logical operations XOR and disjunction together. And in this case, we can clearly begin to observe some patterns, something like a fractal structure, I would call this the Borg cube from the movie Star Trek. And now let's use only the XOR operation, and in doing so, multiply this expression by any prime number. And just look at it, it's amazing, I don't know exactly how to name this structure, but here the Sierpinski triangle is clearly involved again, and it's probably more correct to say the Sierpinski pyramid, so the visualization of prime numbers in 3D space also brought mathematical surprises and does not stop amaze. So inspired by all these incredible visualizations, I decided to do my part to get some interesting structure with prime numbers, and here's what I came up with. Look at this, this is the number line of all natural numbers, prime numbers are displayed as a voxel with a smiley on it. So I decided to come up with some rules to get an interesting representation of natural numbers, and the application of these rules will be based on prime numbers. The bottom line is this, every time a prime number is encountered, I will change the direction of the number line until a new prime number is encountered, we will change directions in the following order, right up forward, then left down and back. 
so I formalized these rules into the code presented in front of you, and let's see what happens after all. And in the end, unexpectedly for myself, I got my own way to display a number line in 3D space, of course I don't pretend to be any discovery, but this is really a map of natural numbers, here the rotation of the number axis is carried out after finding a prime number according to the above rules. And as you can see, such a study of prime numbers turned into a real fascinating and informative journey into the world of mathematics. And by the way, I still can't think of a name for the resulting map of numbers, so I'll be glad to hear your options in the comments.